And I'm thinking, I'm concentrating on casting this devil out. But the other part of me that's listening, I'm thinking, that pit bull's about to come through that door. Mm -hmm. And it felt like any moment he's going to be there. So my brother Eric goes over to the door and he stands guard at the door. And he's got that door pulled, holding that the door, the doctor's pushing on it, hitting it. And, and I kept thinking that the, the, uh, the part of the door that, uh, you carpenter know what I'm talking about, but the, the bolt that goes through when you shut a door and it, it, it goes into the hole that keeps the door shut was not long enough when that door was given. I'm thinking, that people is coming through that door. Now, Jesus, I'm here doing your work, and I'm about to get chewed up by a pit bull. So, <laughs> Brother Eric goes over there, and he grabs the door, and he's holding that door. I mean, that pit bull is shaking that door as he's sitting, and Eric's got his weight against it. So, I didn't want what was behind that door. <laughs> right. Um, I could tell that something behind that door wanted to eat me up. But not every door presents itself that way. That's right. Some doors look good. <clears throat> some doors have false promises behind them. Come on. Yes, come on. And some, some doors have, have a, 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 an allurement to them. But once you've opened the door, as they, say, as they like to say, the cat's out of the bag. Uh, there, there, are, there are things, some of you in your life sitting here today, opened some doors in your life. There were some doors that got opened that you wish you could go back now and you'd have never opened them or you could Amen. close them and have kept them closed. Right. But you opened them. Yep. Amen. Yep. And, now, and now you're dealing with everything that was behind that door. Yep. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Yep. And so, um, what's behind the door? Yep. Let's look at Psalms chapter 8. I want to talk about doormen. Every, every one of us is, every one of us, now we are told that Christ is the door. And he said, you know, uh, spiritually he is the door. There's no way, there's no way into the kingdom of God except access through Jesus. He's the only door by which we enter the kingdom of God. And he said there's other doors out there, or there's other gates. And he said that those gates are wide and all the world goes through them. But the gate into, or the door into the kingdom of God is Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. Very now, some people try to relate that and say that the kingdom of God is very narrow. It's not what the Bible says. The entrance is narrow. Yeah. Once you've entered the kingdom, there's a vast <laughs> supply of blessing. Amen. There's a vast supply of all you have in them. There's promises. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 it's glorious. Amen. So the kingdom itself is not narrow. The door is. And, and so Satan wants to paint a picture. He wants to make the door into whatever kingdom you think the kingdom of God is, he wants to paint a picture that anybody can go in this door. Let's make this door as big as you can. Anybody can enter in. They don't have to go through Jesus. That's, that's, that's all. That, that's just Christianity says that. There's many doors into the kingdom of God. Not so. Jesus said, I'm the door. And anyone else that tries to access this, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the sheep pen, Anybody try to access, they didn't come through the door. They're a thief and a robber. And so, know this, that, that, that we, are, we are a door for someone. You are the, your life, your reflection of or lack of reflection of Christ. My, my lack of or my reflection of Christ is a door for someone. Someone's always watching to see where the door, our door leads to. Someone's always going to copy you. Someone's always going to say, well, you know, I know a Christian. And, and, and for him, because he believes in eternal security, best I can see, because I know he said it because he told me, once saved, always saved. And, and man, he just does anything he wants to do. I mean, he, 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 he gets drunk. He does drugs. He cheats on his income tax. He cheats on his wife. He, he, he has the most vulgar mouth I've ever heard. Man, I guess that, that gate is really wide, the kingdom of God. Anybody can go. Well, that's true. Anybody can go in, but you got to go in the right door. Mm -hmm. You go through the door of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we go through that door through repentance. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And, and so, listen. Many people see Christianity... They see their walk with Christ as a revolving door. They get inside that circular. You know what a revolving door is, right? 
I don't really like those things. I hate to get excited. I like to take big steps and fast steps, and those things never spin fast enough for me. I get fine. I feel like I'm taking little baby steps around until it opens up to where I want to go into. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Those revolving doors? But many people, listen, if you don't get out when the opening comes up, you go right back out where you came from. A lot of people in Christianity, their, their Christian life is like a revolving door. Right. They go in the kingdom and out of the kingdom, and in the kingdom and out of the kingdom. Yes. And we're living for Jesus today, and they're living for the devil tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, that's not the way God intended Amen. 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 And if we're, uh, think about a doorman. Uh, you know, we don't see doormen in San Saba. Uh But if you live, like, in a, say, in a city where there were uh, many uh, uh, high-rise houses, like in New York City, let's just say, let's just use New York City. And they'll have, I know you've seen this in the movie, you'll have the doorman, he's always up front, right? He knows the residents, doesn't he? And he, he's greeting everyone with a smile. He's watching everyone. He's being a very alert and attentive as to who's entering and who's going out. If he's a good doorman, he's guarding that door. He's not keeping people out, but he's making sure the people that come in are the people who are supposed to come in. Right. Amen? Remember, because Satan wants to sneak people in. Right? Even Paul said to the to the elders at Ephesus uh, in, in, in Acts um, chapter or something, uh, when he was leaving them, he said, you'll not see my face anymore, but he said, but after I'm gone, you see, Paul had been there, his visible being, uh, and, and his oversight of the church there had, had guarded them from wolves coming in and sheep's clothes. But he's telling the elders, as he said, when I'm gone, you better guard the faith. Because after I'm gone, there's going to be wolves coming in. Amen. That's right. So one of the doormen's job is to make sure that they know who's coming in and who's going out. Amen. And 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 their job is not to to keep everyone out. I mean, there, listen, there are some there are some Christian churches. I don't I don't understand them. I don't get them. But it's like when you go there, it's there for and no more. It's like you don't meet the criteria we have here at this church. You know. Uh, you know, you walked in in blue jeans. We don't allow blue jeans. Uh, Ma'am, your hair's not up in a bun and your collar's not all the way up. We don't allow you. I mean, it's like they have more rules about who can come. That's right. Yeah. right? They're trusting that God can save them yes. and, 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 and take care of their, their character and sanctify their character. And so uh, the question is, what kind of doorman are you and what's behind the door? What's behind the door? Now let's go to Psalms chapter 84. Um, and just for sake of, of, of uh, context, we'll read the whole song. Beginning in verse 1. For the director of music, according to Gittin, of the sons of Korah. A song. Now we don't know who wrote this. Just the sons of Korah. And, uh, and we don't know particularly which one. But I think there's some indication as we get down here as to who may have wrote this song. Not the person's name what they did. So he says, How lovely is your dwelling in place, Lord Almighty. Yes. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King, and my God. Let me pause here just for a moment. The, the metaphor he's drawing from the sparrow is not so much that the sparrow has somehow or other got into the temple. They were pretty careful about that and built a nest in the temple. The metaphor he's saying is just like the sparrow longs to be in her nest, is always returning to her nest. Even if she has to go out to gather straw or gather food, she longs to be in her nest. So my heart yearns to be. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's the metaphor he's saying there. That's, 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 that's how much I want to be there. I want to return to the temple. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. One of the ones, you know, the main activity of being in the house of God is to praise Him. It's not so much to praise one another, although there's a place for that too. When we lift each other up and encourage each other, 
But really what we're about is to praise God. Amen. 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 Uh, then he says, uh, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Now, to give you some background to that, there was three pilgrimages, three journeys, let's just say. We don't use the word pilgrim much anymore. Unless you're buying chicken, you get pilgrim's pride. <laughs> but the pilgrimage would have been a journey, a trip. And there were three that were mandated. There were at least three a year that the, that the, that the Hebrews had to go to. Three of the three of the Jewish festivals that they were mandated, they were commanded to come to, and those journeys could be uh, could be short for some and long for others, and and they they were um, uh, the journey itself may not be pleasant, but the pleasantness waited for you when you got there. Okay, and so you had these doorkeepers. Well, let's read on, and then we'll talk about that. Uh, Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Verse five. Whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, this means a dry, uh, a very dry valley, the valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. So even though even though they're passing through a dry place, the fact that the fact that God is with them makes it a spring. Right? I've got a I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Yes. So that even if I'm in a dry place, there's a fountain in me. Amen. The fountain of the Lord, amen. amen. Uh, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength. In other words, they go from pool to pool. Wherever it's a dry place, but there's a pooled up water. So they go from one place where they get water to the next place they get water. Because their their destination is not that water pool. It's it's the temple in Jerusalem. And they're going from strength to strength. From 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 Paul said it this way, from glory to glory. Right? Did, did Paul say that in, in, the, in the letter to the Corinthians? He said, from glory to glory. In other words, from, from the presence of God to the presence of God, to those places when, when we're, when, when, where he's called us to next, we go in his strength. And we get to that place of glory. And he said, I got another place for you. And, and, and ultimately, it's him face to face, isn't it? But listen, we go through life. If, we're not, if we don't have the glory pools that we're stopping out, the places of the presence of God where we're taking time to drink and refresh ourselves in the presence of God, the dryness of the desert will kill us. Amen. If you say, if you say I've been in a long, extended period of dry time, listen, don't blame that on God. You need to stop at the pool Come and on. go from strength to strength. Come on. That's right. You've got to take time to drink. And if you're in a hurry, you may pass the you may pass the last little gathering of water, thinking there'll be another one up ahead. Amen. So they go from strength to strength. They're excited to get to the temple. They're excited to go to the house of the Lord. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Then he says, "Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob." Look at our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. And then verse 10 is a song that we sing. It's a very popular song, right? Yep. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. That's right. Yeah. Better is one day in your courts, right? Yes. Better is one day in your courts. Amen. But better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. In other words, God, whatever it takes to get there, it's worth it. One day in your presence is worth a thousand other days. Right on. Amen. I would rather be, here we get to our, where I really want to go. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Amen. I think one of the doorkeepers wrote this song. They were the sons of Korah, the doorkeepers were. I believe the doorkeeper wrote this. And, 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 and the doorkeeper may not be the most um, uh, distinguished jobs in the in maybe in the maybe in the looks of people or in the eyes of people and the success that people might measure success by. But here's what the doorkeeper got to do. These people that have made that journey to get there, you're the first face they're gonna see. Mm -hmm. Come in. Mm -hmm. Come in. I know it's been a I know it's been a difficult journey. I know it's been a long way, it's been a long time coming, but you're here. The door is open. Come on in. Amen. Come on in. So we don't know how many people in our daily walk that we have and people that we have influence with. 
have been going through a difficult journey. They've been going through the valley of Baca. They've been in a dry place. And they've come to you. Watch behind the door when they speak to you. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Do we point them the way to where they can get the refreshing springs of the Spirit of the Lord? <laughs> Do we invite them into His presence and invite them into His courts? Invite them into his house. Or do we, or do we, are we like the Pharisees that Jesus spoke of in the book of Matthew when he said this? He, he, was, he was scolding the Pharisees. Now I'm going to just assume like my grandson a while ago, he said, GB, what's a testimony? I thought that was pretty cool. I'm talking, ah, he's paying attention to something. What's a testimony? So maybe you're saying, what's a Pharisee? Well, Pharisees were the religious teachers of their day. They were, they were the, we would compare them to, not exactly say, we would compare them to the Bible teachers and the preachers and the pastors of today. The they were the religious rulers of their day. And Jesus was scolding them. Here's what he said. He said, you stand at the door of the kingdom, but you yourself don't enter. Come on. Wow. He said, but not only that, not only do you not enter, you don't let others enter. Right. You're blocking the door. Oh, come on, listen. What kind of doorman are we will determine on what's behind the door of our heart? Uh -oh. If we see ourselves as someone who can swing wide the heavenly gate for someone to walk in, yeah. if that's what's in our heart, we're going to be a good doorman. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. But if we ourselves see ourselves on the outside, looking in, someone comes to us, we're going to be, we're going to be a, 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 an obstacle to them entering the kingdom of God. Oh, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be an obstacle. Come on. Amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus said some pretty harsh words about someone who would stand in the way of a little one who wants to come to Christ. That's right. He said it in a peculiar kind of way. He said, he said, woe be unto the one who offends one of these little ones. Come on. That's right. We all think he's just talking about little children. He's not talking just, just about physical little children. That's right. All that we would be dormant. That we know those. See, a good woman recognizes. So we have to have discernment, don't we? Amen. This person, this person that is speaking to me right now. It's more than just what they're saying. There's something much deeper than what the conversation is. The conversation is their way of kind of putting a door up in their own life and not letting me see into. But I can, I can, see, I can hear what was behind that door where that pit bull was. <laughs> I didn't need to see the pit bull. And I could hear that thing. And listen, we need to hear. We need to have spiritual ears to hear. We need to recognize our, our, our job isn't always so much what we say, but what we do. Yep. That's right. Do they, do they, do we, do, does, does someone have access to the word of God through us? Come on. Are we going to turn them on to Oprah? Well, I tell you what, you need to watch. There's a real good episode of Oprah Winfrey that would answer that question for you. Mm -hmm. I used to teach with my wife, and, and, uh, and, I, and I don't dislike the man, he is a Christian. But I used to use this messages all the time. I, people would go, well, just watch Dr. Phil. He's got the answer of that. No. <laughs> Are we going to point people as a doorman? If we've got, listen, if we've got Jesus behind the door, that means in us. Amen. What do you think he's going to do? He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's right. So if Jesus is behind our door, people ought to be being drawn right. to Christ. What if they catch us on a bad day? Anybody ever had a bad day? Mm -hmm. Man, I've had some of those embarrassing days. Mm -hmm. I've got, Lord, I did anything but open the door for others to see you today. That was the last, I mean, that was the last thing on my mind. And, and if you have the Spirit of God, what happens is there's a grief, yes. an inward grief that will overtake you. It'll come to you just like, oh, God, I... It's, it's not. It's not. It's not a feeling. It's not. It's not a voice. I shouldn't say. Feeling. It's not a voice, an inner voice that says, "Get away from me. I don't know you. Depart from me. You work of iniquity. I don't know you." It's not that. It's a voice inside, inside me that says, "God, I'll let you down." Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Holy Spirit, I grieved you. That's right. I, I, this, this person was seeking help, and all I could do was, was think about myself. So I, I think the writer of this of this song was says in the sons of Korah, I think he was a doorkeeper. He said, he says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. And I think I think that's that's such a powerful uh, metaphor, a powerful analogy. He says, what I'm what I'm doing is of great importance. I mean, there are people coming to the temple to worship, and I'm getting to receive them. Come, Thank come. You. I mean, listen, we 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 got to be doors that that say to people, Jesus loves you. Jesus will welcome you. Jesus can handle any of your problems. You you have not been cast out of His sight or or cast away from His love. But we can be like the Pharisees. We can be the very obstacle that will keep people from from coming. I mean, I hear it all the time. It's not right. Please don't misunderstand me. It's not right. I hear people all the time say, well, I'm not going to that church because so-and-so goes there. And I don't like them. Hmm. They hurt me one time. So we, we, we got two things going on there. We got, we, we got, we got someone that, that is letting a person keep them from God. No one should ever keep us from the Lord, right, man? That's right. We shouldn't be so easily distracted. But... Uh, what happens is, I, I think one of the things that we do, I don't think any of us, including myself, ever set out to say, God, I'm going to be an obstacle to a door ministry today. I'm going to be an obstacle to anyone's, anyone's access to ministry today. I don't think any of us wake up and say, this is the day. I'm going to put a roadblock up. I'm going to be like a Pharisee and keep everybody out. I don't think we do that. But here's what I do think happens. Uh, the other day, my grandsons, uh, shortly after Amy moved into the house she's in now, and uh, they didn't have a, a key, but Chloe had a key to the house. And they didn't know she hadn't gone to school that day. She was sick. And so she's in there on the bed, and she's got, laying on the bed, she's got her headphones on with her music playing. And the boys are outside beating on the, on the door. They're knocking. Now, it wasn't that Chloe didn't want to let them in. But she didn't hear them. Why did she not hear them? She was distracted. What 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 is a good doorman is not distracted, right? Because if we get distracted, if a doorman, if I was going to be a thief in some kind of high-rise apartment buildings, and and they had a really good doorman that knew everyone, right? What you want to do is get a distraction, get somebody to distract the doorman, and then you go in while the doorman is distracted. And this is what happens with God's people. We get distracted with the cares of this world. That's right. We get distracted with, with, with life itself. We get distracted with things that, that are of no eternal significance. We get distracted with them. We get distracted with some offense we picked up. We get, dis we get distracted with, 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 with our jobs. We get distracted with our finances. We get, we get distracted with sickness. We get, I mean, listen, it is so easy to distract people. It's, 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 it's e Matter of fact, it's easier to distract them than it is to get their focus. Isn't it? I mean, and listen, you think, you, think, you think the enemy can't create distractions so that he can get in? That's right. Oh, he can create all kinds of distractions. And he does. And so, focus. A doorman, a doorman has to be focused. And so the, the, these doormen in the temple here in Psalms 84, they're like... They're, they're anticipating. Because see, everybody didn't show up at the same time in these pilgrimages. I mean, they, 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 came, they, were, they were streams of people coming. And so they had to be ready. And it's like when they saw, the, the, we don't know when they're going to arrive, but we're ready. And when they come here, they come. Come into the house of the Lord. Welcome them in. Swing wide, you heavenly gates. We're so glad you're here today. Let me tell you, greeters at the front door of our church are so glad. Amen. I mean, we, you know, you don't want to greet just open the door. <laughs> I mean, we want to greet and say, hey, we're so glad you took time out today to be with us. Mm -hmm. If you greeters aren't doing that, start doing it. <laughs> I mean, let them know. You know, there's a lot of places you could have been today, but you're here with us. Mm 
Amen. We want you to be here with That's us. That's right. And, uh, and just that it's important even when, when you're in here, instead of just finding your seat and resting your blessed assurance. <laughs> <laughs> you see somebody you don't know, go to them. Amen. We were at the wedding last night of both uh, Will Robertson Jr. And there was just this man that was there. And I just couldn't, I couldn't take my eyes off of him. He, he was the first one that greeted me after the wedding. And just very, I mean, just having one of these faces, he was comfortable in his own skin. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean by that? It's like there was no insecurity whatsoever in this man. Most Sometimes we're like going, okay, you're shaking a hand over more. Do I have a booger in my nose? Is my hair messed up? <laughs> is my shirt right? Is, is my, bre my breath okay? Now this man, he had no insecurity. He, he, he was just comfortable with himself. And he was so friendly. He came up and shook my, shook my hand and said, Preacher, that was, that was so good. That was so wonderful. And uh, so... Anyway, I went to, my wife had already picked the table out. We were sitting at this table. He happened to be one table over. And I'm just, he just did my view. I'm watching him. And he just, he just had a glow about it. He was just greeting everyone. And just as big a smile. Was like, I thought maybe he was going to pick up a microphone and be a singer that night or something. He just had this, he just, he had no inhibitions. So finally, I just, I just I was asking everybody at the table, you know that man? I know. And I'm talking about asking the same type of people. So I went over and I was bed and I said, I said, sir, I just got to find out who you are. So I've just been watching you. You are the friendliest guy I ever saw. You're unbelievable. And he said, well, well my name's Tom, Tom Barker. And what's yours? I said, I'm Tom Brown. And, uh, and uh, anyway, we, 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 we got to talk. And then he, then he came over to our table after that and was walking around. There was something about him that just says, I want to get to know you. Yeah. Now, some people have an aura that says, don't you even try to get to know me. <laughs> I don't want you to know me. You're not going to know me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now listen, I understand there's different types of personalities. But Jesus trumps our personality. Yes. Yes. Come on. You've done all those personality tests where you're about you were a sand runner, phlegmatic, or, or whatever those words are. Or the, or the one with the animals, you're a beaver, or, or a skunk, or whatever. <laughs> That is no excuse to remain yes. in that place. Amen. Jesus trumps our personality traits. That's right. Yes. Amen. Right so that a shy person. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? What's behind the door? What, would, would Jesus want people welcome here? Well, if Jesus is behind the door of my heart, yes. and I'm here in a welcoming place, it ought to be real welcoming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I mean, yeah. Jesus said to the worst man in Jerusalem, the one that all of the Jews hated the worst. They hated Zacchaeus. His name was Household Mud. Why? Because he was a Jewish man that extracted taxes over and above what Rome asked for for himself. In other words, he was a traitor to Jerusalem. They got a Jewish man to collect taxes for him. And he was raping people over the coast. He got rich off of his own people collecting taxes. So they hated Zacchaeus. And Jesus sees Zacchaeus. Lined up in the street, except he was up in a tree because he couldn't see. And, and Jesus looks up in the tree and says, Zacchaeus. Now you think Jesus, let me ask you, you think he had invitations to the houses that day? He could have went to anybody's house he wanted to. Because this time, this wasn't when they were yelling crucify him. This is when he was doing miracles of people. Everybody wanted to meet Jesus. <laughs> Jesus looked up at the one guy that everyone there, if they said, there's the one guy that Jesus won't go home with today. Everyone would have said Zacchaeus. No one would go to his house. No Jew would go to his house. That's right. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, you got room? I want to come to your house today. Man, Zacchaeus came down out of the tree and said, let's go. Mm. Amen. Now, once Jesus got to his house, got inside his door, he never even said anything about Zacchaeus being a thief. He just came. His very presence there, his holy presence in Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus said, Lord, I'm going to refund everyone I defrauded. I'm going to pay them back. Man, that was, just, that was just in the presence of Jesus. Amen? So, listen, what's behind the door of our heart will determine what kind of door we own. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. See, it, it, there, there's, there's, there's this, 
the attitude of the one coming to the door. It's 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 when we do we come do we come into his presence as we come to the house of the Lord? Which by the way, we're the house of the Lord. Personally, amen. But we gather corporately in this place called the church. Do we come expectantly? Do we come cheerfully? Do we come? Do we come expecting to meet our holy God and to be in his presence and to have him speak to us? Do we expect that? Amen. He says, ask it will be given to you. That, that means there, there, there's a part of us that has to have the want to. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then he says, seek and you will find. That's the, that's the action behind the asking. I'm not just asking. I'm going to do something about it. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm actively seeking. I'm searching. Not like our kids who we say you're, 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 uh, I know your game jerseys in your drawer. And they go on. A minute later they come back. It's not there. Why? Because the search wasn't very active. They come back to mom. She says, I know I put it in your drawer. Did you look? I don't know. You walk in there and there's one other t-shirt on top of it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Open the door. It's not right on top. They shut the drawer. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know you moms do. It's ridiculous. Now, it's a whole other matter when your wife asks you to go look in the purse to find something. <laughs> <laughs> I bring the purse. I am not looking through that. I can't find anything in my wife's purse. There's nothing in it. Stop. See, you, ladies have, you ladies have coordinated chaos organization. <laughs> <laughs> you have a brother. I mean, you know where something is, and all I see is in the junk drawer. <laughs> I've got those in my house. I don't need one in my purse or my wallet. Right? So, so I, I'm telling myself, I don't diligently search in my wife's purse. I just bring her purse. She'll find it. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Uh, but he says, he says, ask and it will be given. So, so that, that's the easiest part, to ask and seek. Here's the action part. We've got to get after it. We're going we're to look for it. And he says, and the door will be open to you. That's right. No, we're just expecting. We're just expecting every door to be open. I've arrived. Every door is open. God, you're so lucky to have me in your kingdom. Every door of ministry is open to me now. It's not that way. People want to know how much you care before they want to know how much you know. Come on. Paul says this in First Corinthians chapter sixteen and verse nine. He says this, talking about this door. He says. Because a great door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many who oppose me. So Paul says, listen, there's a door that's open. Christ has opened it. It's a door of ministry. It's open. But listen, it's going to be a battle to get through that door. Why? Because Satan opposes it. He says, there's opposition to my open door. And, 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 and Satan, want, why would Satan not want, why would he want to resist you going through that door? Because he knows what can happen on the other side of that door. He didn't want Paul, because everywhere Paul went, people got saved. Everywhere Paul went, people got healed. Everywhere Paul went, people burned their books of sorcery. People burned their idols and, and, and got rid of them. I mean, people's lives changed. And some people's livelihoods were lost because their livelihood was based on sorcery and witchcraft. That Satan did not want Paul going through some of those doors. So God would open a door. Paul said, but there's great opposition. The kingdom of God, Jesus said this. If you don't hear anything else, hear this. He said, from the time of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent takes yes, by force. Mm -hmm. If you think God just going to open the door of ministry for you and Satan just going to stand by you, you're just going to stroll through and look at me. <laughs> God opened this door and here I am. Man, Satan's coming in opposition. And sometimes the opposition is going to come in the form of people. And sometimes those people are going to be people you used to like. Come on. Shouldn't have said used to. People you like. Sometimes the very people you like will be the very ones the very ones That's opposing right. you going through that door. That's right. So what we how how does that affect me as a doorman? Well, listen. I want to be someone when there's an effective door open for them. Can we help them get through that door? Yeah. Isn't that what it's about here in the church? Isn't our job, leaders, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, isn't it to equip the saints for the work of ministry? Right. That's right. Aren't we to help them get through those doors? Yeah. We've got to be good doormen. But then again, what's behind the door? 
See, if, 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 the, if the motivation behind the door to keep everybody else pushed down so I can keep myself exalted, then I'm not going to help pe get people through the door. And then finally, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. You know this scripture. Jesus said, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Now let me ask you a question. I'm talking about doors. The types of doors they are. How many believe Jesus can walk through a door? Yeah. It doesn't have to be open, right? Yep. He can walk through walls, right? We, we know there's, in other words, there's nothing that can keep him back. But yet it says here that he knocks on the door and says, will you let me in? That's right. So what's the attitude of the person behind that door? I don't know if I want Jesus to come through that door. Because if he sees my house and the mess it's in right now, what will he think? What's behind the door? If I open that door to Jesus, if I open the door to becoming a Christian, oh, what's he going to rearrange my house to be? What kind of order is he going to put it in? Because I'm pretty used to the mess it's in. I may not particularly <laughs> like the mess, but I'm used to where every mess is. I'm very familiar with the messes. I'm very comfortable with the messes. And don't mess with my mess. <laughs> and you think I'm kidding, but I'm going to tell you what, I, there are situations like that. Where drama and chaos is the, is, the, is the order of the day. And when God comes to restore order, they say, well, I don't know, I kind of like the drama. I kind of like the chaos. Mm -mm. I do have to maneuver around it. Jesus said, Behold, I stand on the door. Listen, he could, he, could, he could knock your door down and come right through it. He wouldn't have to knock it down. He could leave the door and then just walk in. But he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Would you let him in? Amen. Would you let him in? Or are there so many distractions in your life right now that you don't even know he's knocking? <clears throat> Are we so caught up with everything else going on in our life? All of our plans, all of our future plans, all of our all of, all of the all of our retirement, what, wondering, wondering if we're gonna have enough to retire, wondering where we're gonna live when we retire, wondering, wondering if there's enough money to retire, wondering, wondering uh are we are we, are we got enough money to send our kids to school? Uh, the, the, the kids the kids are wondering what's gonna happen at school today, they're wondering they're gonna pass the test. Listen, the Bible says that the cares of the world choke out the word of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I love what he promises. This is one of the promises, somebody you asked. Mm -hmm. He says, If anyone hears my voice, yes. so listen, that means the distractions are going to be gone. Chloe, the headphones are going to be out of the ears because you would have hurt your brothers if you had the headphones in. <laughs> I'm playing. She knows I'm kidding. She's my granddaughter, so I can mess with it. Um, so, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice. This is that history. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice. So he's not just knocking. He's going, hello? Anybody in there? Mm -hmm. His voice is coming too. Yes, hello? Mm -hmm. Anybody let me in? I want to come in. Mm -hmm. We're all here. We're, Man. We're here. He says, if you'll open that door, here's the promise. I'll come in. Yes, hallelujah. Don't scramble to get your clothes on. Don't scramble to get that get that already movie off the TV. Uh -oh. Don't try to get everything in order before you open the door. Just open the door. Yes, amen. Jesus can handle any sin in your life. Amen. His blood can wash away the vilest of sin. Just open the door. Yes, amen. Amen, amen. There was a song that I found about a year ago and I would play it for a leadership team. I'm not asking them to play it, they don't know it, but the chorus went like this. It says, You knock on the door of my heart and I will answer you. I will answer you. You make me cover. Then this other part of it says, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid anymore. 
love has made a way. And I say yes, God, I accept the invitation to your love. Yes. Just accept yes. this invitation today. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes, hallelujah. And if anyone hears my voice, see, he's not just knocking, he's speaking. Mm -hmm. If you will let the door of your heart open to him, invite him in. He says, I'll come. I'll come. And can I tell you something? The greatest thing, the greatest one that you can behind, have behind the door of your heart is not you. It's not your opinions or your emotions or your defense mechanisms. The greatest one behind the door of your heart needs to be Jesus. So you can't say like Brother Mike said earlier, greater is he that's in me. Than he that's in the world. Yes, Jesus. So with all those other things come knocking at your door, you've got Jesus guarding the door. Yeah. So if that's you today, and you want to open the door of your heart, whether you're listening online right now, or watching online, or listening, you could just write a comment in the box. I'm opening the door of my heart today to Jesus. Just make a comment there on our live stream. If you're here today and you just want to say. Jesus, I'm opening the door of my heart to you. Just lift your hands up. This is a sign. Lord, Lord I'm, lift, I'm opening my heart to you. Whatever you want, come on in. Come on in. Make yourself at home. Do whatever you want to do in this heart. I want to long to dwell in your presence like that doorkeeper who wrote that Psalm 84. Better is one day in your house one day in your presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. So lift your hands to heaven. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, God, that we let you in so that we can now know the promises that are behind the door. And God, I pray that we'd be good doormen. Thank you, Jesus. As we swing that door open for others. To say welcome. Come in. And we do that easily. We sang today. We do that church through our testimony. Our testimony is a door opener. And so Father bless these. The hearers of your word today. Seal the word in their hearts. By your Holy Spirit. And let us all be good doorkeepers. And guard what's behind the door. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you.